welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Why, hey there, my fabulous listener. Welcome to episode 209 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. This is a great one. It is all about launching. So whether you are about to launch a product, a project, a business, or even a newsletter, this is a great episode for you to be tuning into. And I thank you for lending me your ears today. I know you have lots of choices out there and I really do appreciate you making me one of them. But I would like to get to know you a little bit too. So if you can take a screenshot of you listening to this and share it on your socials and tag me, that would be awesome and super super cool and I would love to follow you along in your journey and cheer you on as well. Don't forget of course the show notes for this podcast can be found at all the w's socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 209. I never know these days whether you actually need to say www because it's kind of like a given that there'll be w's before a website. So every time I go to read this when I'm doing an episode, I think, do I need to say all the W's? Do I need to say www.socialmediaandmarketing.com.au? Or do people just know? Love your thoughts on that. Just a bit of a random at the start of the podcast. Um, But of course, before I get started on today's episode, I want to know what you thought of last week's episode, episode 208. Have you listened to it? If you haven't, then slip back there after you finish listening to this awesome episode and get some more small business made simple gold. Last week, it was all about hashtags, how to use them, where to use them, tips and tricks on how those pesky little things can really help you grow your business and get in front of the audience that you want. And of course, the audience who will one day do business with you. But on to today's topic, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we are talking about launching. It's actually not a podcast, a topic that I've discussed so far. And it always blows me away that after 209 episodes, um, there's still more to talk about. So it goes to show the complexity of running a small business simply by the fact that after 209 conversations, I haven't actually talked a lot about launching. But I don't know much about launching or I'm not the expert in launching, I should say. So I have a guest. His name is Russell Pearson and Russell is an award-winning founder of the Crimson Fox Creative Studio and has a lifetime of experience in the world of marketing and sales. Russell is also the past national president of uh, the Professional Speakers of Australia. He's a blacksmith, which is a little bit cool, and the father of three energetic children. Yay, three children parents. Um, I am there for you. Um, But he is here to help us learn about how to launch. So again, whether you're launching your next business, your next product, your next course, your next offering, or even that you you are launching a newsletter from big to small. We have a strategy that, um, well, we, I, we is not the word. Russell has a strategy that he's going to talk to you about today on the podcast. This is one of the best episodes, so I really highly recommend you listen once and then you sit down and listen again with a pen and paper because there is just so much gold here and so much of the conversation is really going to make you strategically think better about your business, which I love. But it's also set out in such a way that it's step by step, which of course is helping make your small business life simpler, which we all know I am so here for. So anyway, without further ado, here is Russell and our conversation. Hey, Russell, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. Jen, it is great to be here. Oh, I'm really excited to get into this topic. And I was just saying to you in the um, little chat we had beforehand that I can't believe we haven't already covered this subject in over 200 episodes, but we're talking about launching products and services. But before we get into that, can you introduce yourself to my audience who perhaps um, haven't either come across you or not quite sure what it is that you do? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Russell Pearson, uh, for the last 25 years, actually more than that now, <laughs> I've been working in uh, promotion, sales and marketing and um, everything that we, I think, do uh, is very much around helping people engage their ideal client and sometimes that's through a catalyst like a launch. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm really excited to talk about this topic because it's not something we've spoken about on the podcast before, but it's probably something we do incidentally in our business quite often and we're just not putting a process or a strategy around it. Would I be right in saying that for most small business owners? A hundred percent. There are sort of two ways to engage new customers or, or get more sales. One is the evergreen uh, process of actually having a process uh, which connects, qualifies and invites people to a step that uh, not enough businesses have that actually in place. So making sure that you've got your sales and marketing processes that uh, you know smoothly work into new clients is always great. But the other side of that is, is creating catalyst moments, like moments in time where something bigger happens. And I think <clears throat> small businesses, business, uh, actually most business in particular, because I used to work for large pharmaceuticals, uh, looks at that type of marketing more often than not. But there are some fundamentals that most people are, are not doing. And I think that's part of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, it is. Definitely. So I guess for anyone who's listening, who's kind of like, well, what do you mean? Can we start off by there and like have an understanding of what do you mean by launching? Yeah. So a launch is just uh, letting people know that you're starting something at a point in time. It's it's creating a moment in time where something happens. Now, a launch could be we're launching an event. A launch could be we're launching a product or a service. A launch could be you're launching a a business or you're launching into a market. Uh, It can be any of these things. In fact, you can launch a newsletter. It can be as simple (laughs) as that. Um, it's just a, it's creating a moment in time where you, you, you build up energy and you release it basically. Yeah. Which is kind of like, I guess, go back to my first comment of saying that most of us do this without even really knowing and without having that process around it, because like you say, it could be something as simple as launching a new, new newsletter or, a, you know, a different type of newsletter or changing what the newsletter says type of things. So can you walk us through a few of the key steps to think about when we're talking about launching a new product or a new service or something like that? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I've got a, a formula for it, but it's interesting that the point you just made then um, about you know, incidentally, people are mo- mainly doing this within their business, but often it's um, launches because of lack of design. Like they that we we did something and then we didn't do it for three months, so we have to do it again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it has its own version of launching because they didn't make it an evergreen thing. Yeah, but there are um, there there are seven steps in in what I recommend in a launch process Um, and the three steps in the middle are what most people are used to Um, that are the pre-communication phase which is like we're going to advertise we're going to tell people that something's about to happen Uh, you think of a movie trailer you think of um, uh, letting your email list know that an event's coming up or a save the date or something like Mm -hmm. that Mm mm-hmm then we have the launch itself, and it's a moment in time. Now, uh, we were just speaking uh, before we hit the record button about uh, expos mm-hmm. in particular, uh, where it's a moment in time where people come together and they have a, a large crowd come through and there's a catalyst for c- communication and having people buy or engage with you. That That's an example of that launch phase. Uh, an event is another example of a launch phase or a, a date when you release your newsletter or whatever it might be. It's a, it's a moment in time. And there's a there's a bang. You know, there's usually a call to action and people are asked to do something. Um, sometimes they're not, <laughs> but, but, but they should. Yes. Right? It should be, you know, what, what do we want them to do is an important step of the launch. Um, but that, that pre-communication piece and then the, the launch itself are what uh, most people are used to. And, and there's this sort of hamster wheel effect of like, what should we launch? Okay, let's do this. Let's tell everyone we're going to do it, then we do it. And in the... Um, the place I saw this the most is actually in um, the construction industry. So people who are selling products to to the construction construction industry. And I was doing a lot of work in um, LED lights, lighting, and things like that. And the the sales team felt that they needed a reason to go out to speak to their clients. 
And so we would create these new products simply to have something to talk about. Um, Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, and I even saw this back when I was in my twenties, which was a long while back, uh, where we would create brochures for salespeople. So they had, they had a catalyst in their hands to go out and show people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so people are doing that, but it's not overly effective in just those two steps. So the smart businesses are also doing the third step, which is, um, the post communication, um, and it's telling people how it went, how good was it? You know, uh, yeah, we wish you could have been there, sort of thing. And it and it and it really uh, makes the hype and the effort really valuable because mm-hmm. you get a second bite of the cherry. People start to see what's happening, and that's great actually in events where you've got ongoing events, like you might have an event every month. Mm-hmm. There is nothing sadder than saying we have ten tickets still available, so please come to our event, right? Uh, it's far better to have the post communication of that was such a fantastic sellout event. Make sure you get your tickets now. We've just launched for the next one, right? Yeah, so that's the yeah. Post communication. That's the, and so those three those three phases are very much in the middle of my my format. Um, and would you say that a lot of businesses would do those three steps and then call something either a good or a failure? Like I find oh, yeah. that some people launch and that didn't work. So I'll launch and that didn't work and I launch and that didn't work. But I think the next four steps that you're going to talk to us about are maybe the reason why it didn't work because they uh-huh. just didn't give it long enough to work. Yeah, and this is especially true in uh, new businesses and startups. But mm-hmm. I, so I will talk to that in just a second. But also the, the reason that most of these – launches if when they don't work uh, fail is because there is not a sales process there's not a process that the launch uh funnels them into mm. so uh people will say all right we had a launch we went to an expo we did a thing did it work did we have people come up and talk to us and did we make sales rather than have the expo or the event move them into the next step in their sales process enabling them to have conversations after the launch yeah Uh, that's the whole piece Mm -hmm. and uh that same thing happens in product sales and e-commerce sales where you've got all right we've we've launched a new product now people have expressed an interest in that product what else are we offering them are we bringing them into our uh our lead system are we bringing them into our communication channel so we can Mm. continue yeah, right. my friend uh, Julia Hewitt, who's very much a sales strategist, will say number seven. You know, the the money comes in at follow up number seven or something, yes. which kind of leads into this as well. That you know, this has to be have some longevity to it. A hundred percent. And so we take that 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 middle portion, which is the pre communication, the launch itself, and the post communication. We yeah. we put that in the middle. The, there's two steps before and two step two steps after. The the two steps before, not many people are doing. And it's um, it's amazing when you do this how much more successful your launch will be. So um, listen up. <laughs> uh, the the first of those steps is to speak to the market you're about to launch into. And that may sound simplistic, but literally having a chat with people who you want to be able to buy or engage in the thing that you're about to launch, talking to them about what's going on in their world, Con- context, what's actually happening around them. Um, what are their challenges? What are the, the opportunities they see in front of them? Like understanding who they are. There are, there are so many. And, and I have to lean on this because I, I've done so many presentations and mentoring sessions in uh, incubators around the country. And it's incredible where someone will spend two years in building a product and preparing to launch a product without ever speaking to the people who may buy it. We call this the listening phase, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so listening to the market is is very crucial, but like the proactive step of actually going out to the market to speak to them in a very open way allows you uh, to, yeah, get the problems that they want solved 100%, but also use the, the language that they're using around those problems, how they're describing those problems. That's definitely part of the listening phase. The, the interesting bit is context. What else is happening around? Because um, you can actually launch, let's say, a, pro, a, a program, a, a service, a, a product multiple times because the market has shifted. 
-hmm. you can just change the name of it you can change the the um how it fits into the world the context of it understanding how your thing's going to fit into a contextual conversation right is really important so yeah listening phase definitely number one uh number two is uh it's a trick it's an interesting one way back when i used to work in uh, government a fair bit and we would uh, create these government documentations <laughs> and we found that a lot of people were not engaged in the process funnily enough <laughs> and so we would do things like add two full stops to the end of sentences and put minor spelling mistakes and we would do that so that people had something to fix and therefore had ownership over the actual project and the and the document there was an ownership level to them oh no i've made this change therefore it's my document so the the second step i call rumor which is about actually speaking to the market's leaders who are the people who are influencers in the space who are the people that already have the market that you're looking to reach and ask for their opinion i'm thinking of doing this thing what do you think have a look at this prototype or this draft what do you think Many people are scared of that because they think they might steal the idea, but people are busy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They'll have the they time are. for your idea as well, right? They and are. and it's amazing how these leaders have an opinion and they actually want to add, um, they want to help. They go, oh, well, this would work if you change this thing. Or here's, a con here's an idea that uh, you might want to try. And you take that feedback and you incorporate that feedback and you thank the people for that feedback. And funnily enough, they suddenly have ownership over your success and your ability to then go, um, would love you to to share this when we when we launch. They go, absolutely. You know, in fact, I'd love to be at the launch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's amazing how that happens. And and when I say rumor, yeah, some rumor might get out. Some people might talk about it, which is great because it's a, this really early pre-communication. And what's funny about this is I, I did this model years ago. Uh, but since I've, the, the people I've seen do it the best are Marvel. Okay. Marvel have this ability to leak things to the geek, uh, and I'm one of them, but, uh, to the. And my the, daughter's one of them. So yeah. I hear a lot about Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To the, so to, to the, to the geek leadership, the people who are on YouTube, uh, who go, this secret came out and they're like, then they build this excitement before even the official communication comes. Mm. Um, and it's, it's a really powerful, useful, uh, mechanism. So the first step, chat, listen, second step, start talking about it with people who would actually help and support you talking about it with people who, uh, have your market already captured. Then we move into. Can the... I just put a little point in there? Because I often see this, and I do think some people probably do it without noticing, and I do it, and I sort of think, "Oh, you, you, that's pretty cool. I like that." So I often see take a Facebook group, for instance, and someone might be going to launch a new business, and they put in what logo do you like this one, this one, this one, or this one. Yeah. So basically you can either care what the opinions are or not care what the opinions are. But the idea is to, in my head, you're creating brand awareness about around a new business that's coming. So you've kind of said, you know, talk to these industry leaders, take on their feedback and make any necessary changes. But I'm kind of thinking also that sometimes you don't have to care what they're saying. Like, you know, can, or is that a totally different thing? Like I sort of think well, you know, they, if you're asking are, for someone's yeah. opinion on a logo, you don't have to agree with them. You can no. already have your mind made up, but you're using it as a bit of a strategy. Yeah, hundred percent. And and it definitely does, uh, definitely does work as well. What uh, I do see people just share it with anyone, yes. which actually talks to the whole anyone's my market issue. Yes. <laughs> true. That's um, true. Yeah. And yeah. the, and the step that I'm talking about, which I actually spoke to a client uh, this week about this, this whole piece uh, they're doing an event and they're trying to get more people to the event. I'm like, all right, so how are you been going? All right, we've got 70 people. How have you done that? We've engaged with these people and, in, and invited them. All right, well, rather than doing ones and twos, let's actually go to people who can who can share your message to 2,000 people, to 4,000 people and say, what's the best way for me to do that? How can I support your business and how can I support what you're doing in what I'm doing? Yeah. And it's a way of not having to partner or, or joint venture with them but uh, but do it in a thought uh, and and positioning and and you know uh, market alignment. Mm, well, yeah, right. great, yeah. love that. Yeah, so they're, they're both both useful. Um, it's it's the intention. Intent yeah. that's the whole thing, right? It's like what is the intention of each of these steps? Yeah. 
So you got the first two, you got the middle, which is the pre-coms, the post-coms and the launch. Um, and then after you launch, right? So you've told everyone how good it was. You've actually got to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that mean? That means <clears throat> help people sign up, help people say yes. You've been at an expo. You've got all these people who've signed up for your uh, your gift voucher, your gift voucher, or your hamper, or whatever your competition is. Those people now need to be engaged and moved to the next step. Like helping people to to say yes is is something that uh, it's incredible to me uh, how often it doesn't happen. And I tell you what, if I was to write a PhD, it would be on the intersection of the of sales and marketing. It's that space right in the middle where in corporations, there are two departments that point at each other, going, "Why aren't you doing? Why aren't you doing that?" And in in small organisations where you know, you're everyone. <laughs> it's this seesaw effect of I'm focusing on marketing, I'm focusing on sales. Mm -hmm. right? Or there's a preference. You know, I've got some certain people have said, I really like marketing, but I don't like sales. Or I really like sales, but I don't like marketing. Well, one without the other is, you know, Divided. incredible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, the delivery um, and uh, yeah, you see it in the expo space, but you do see it on product launches. Uh, you'll have all these people go, yeah, I want to I want to know more about it. And then they don't follow up with a phone call. They don't go and call them and actually see if they actually want to take step take the step forward. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was always blown away, like being an ex-retailer from quite some years ago, we would go to these big expos and like some of these people would pay fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for a spot at the expo and we would never hear from them again. I'm like, man, you must have money to burn if you don't need a return on that investment. I remember going into a business once and saying, what is the KPI on this event? Like, what are we, what are we trying to do on this event? And they go, oh, we don't want to have KPIs on this. This is just the thing we have to be at. And I'm like, why? Uh, because everyone is. All right. So what about we're there and <laughs> <laughs> we also uh, engage people and get sales out of it? Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. But, you know, we just want to enjoy the event. I'm like, okay. Okay. If it's a cultural thing for you, that's absolutely fine. But, yeah, uh, I think we may be on the same page. It's a numbers yeah. game. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So deliver, yeah, get people to say yes, because that's the whole point of whatever it is that you're launching. And it doesn't have to be sales, but sales is helping people take a step, right? So what are you helping them take a step into? Subscribe. You know, um, here's a really uh, a topical one, uh, LinkedIn newsletters. <sighs> right, you do a LinkedIn newsletter and it, and it, you, you set it up and it, you, you hit publish and it, calls out to every single person on your list and goes, do you want to actually be on this? And they go, job done. <laughs> you go, oh, I've got a thousand people on this. It's fantastic. Look at the marketing I just did. Uh, rather than, all right, how do I actually increase that to 2,000, 3,000, et cetera, by, by helping those people that were not saying yes on the first go round to take say yes on the next. Mm. So yeah, delivery is big. It's very important. It's got to happen. Um, and then the final step, step seven is, is getting feedback. Now, feedback's a funny one. A lot of people don't like feedback. They, they create feedback in a way that makes them feel good. Yep. Um, and on the flip side, which is not as not useful either, which is I really like um, negative feedback or critical feedback because I can do something with it. You know? As long as uh, it's qualified. If it's yeah, qualified, yeah, it's feedback, qualified it's feedback, it's okay, yeah. negative or positive, but yeah. But there's a purpose for both, right? So uh, uh, getting feedback on like, how did you like the product? How did you like the experience? How did you like the process? All those sort of things. So the critical side of things. But on the flip side, um, you know, what what did the thing enable you to do? What was the testimonial? What was the the great information? What else would you like? Or this is a fun one. Now that this has solved your problem, what problem have you now got? <laughs> that uh, sounds like the medical industry all over again, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's uh, solve a problem to create a problem or vice versa. Yeah, well, I mean, they do it through design. So there's that. <laughs> but, the, uh, but I'll give you an example, right? So I work with people on their, their sales and marketing and especially the pipeline side of things. And I solve the problem of I don't have enough leads. I don't have enough opportunities. And then they go, all right, that's solved. Fantastic. Now I've got too many opportunities. Mm -hmm. How do I, how do I, how do I work with all these people? How do I, um, how do I get them to say yes? Because I'm like running all over the place. Then it becomes sales process and all the other things that come after that. 
I think it's 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 the best point of time, and that's what this whole launch thing is about. The whole phase is about a, a point in time. It's the best point in time to get the feedback to go. What should we launch next? Mm-hmm. Because that's when it becomes a cycle, and you you, you start to create this cycle of launching. Uh, which is incredibly useful for your business, whether it's a case of, all right, I just want to bring some energy into the business quarterly, like maybe you launch something once every three months or even a year, every year if you've got a slower um, a slower turnaround on your client base. Yeah, um, and the launch of like Apple's iPhone is a perfect example of that full circle that you're talking about, isn't it? Like, you know, they launched the first iPhone, they didn't stop there, they got feedback, they tweaked, yeah. they relaunched, they got feedback, they tweaked, they relaunched, and here we are at, you know, 13 or whatever the iPhone is now because of that loop that you were talking about. Yeah, so so that's great, actually. Um, uh I'm always funny on an Apple example. I'm, I've been an Apple fan uh, fanboy since um, the early '90s because I'm a, I, I was trained as a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. And the um, the interesting thing, um, whether it be Steve Jobs like passing or whatever it might be, the, the there's a shine that's gone off Apple's launches, mm-hmm. and it's because they're not looking at context, and so they get the feedback, and they don't do the chat. Uh, okay. So they go back to the start, take an opinion, and then listen to the audience again, because they will launch with a new feature, faster, better, blah blah blah, or, or like we've got the same stuff and we're just improving it. So the technic, the, the it's become very technical rather than listening to what is the market saying right now. I'll give you an example where we've been having an incredible time for the last two years. There is no response to that in the launch. There is no response to where the world is and where the world's moved. Um, there's just a celebration of we now have this big audience and, and we need an excuse to launch. So all they need to do is add context and it would be like, yeah, the grand old days again. Mm, yeah, 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 I guess. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what the future holds for them then. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, the, even you think of when it first started, like uh, yeah, a thousand songs in my pocket or whatever the, the actual phrase was. Yes. Uh, it was yeah. an answer. It was an answer to a a, a CD player. Yeah. Uh, mm. And so, what is the next launch in answer to? Um, there was a time when it was a phone because it was in answer to I've got too many devices, right? So, what is the next thing in answer to? And I think that's important for everyone who's listening that when you are looking at this launch, yes, you've gone through the process once and you've talked to people once, or you've started your business and you talked to people at the start, which was brilliant. And you were smart and you did it, and, you, and they launched something useful. When you come back full cycle, talk to those people again, mm-hmm. uh, your, your current clients, the new possible clients. How has the world moved for them and how how's, how have things changed? And I think you like made a really good example just then of how has the world changed. And I think if you haven't launched something in the last 12 months, 18 months, your audience has changed. It is yeah. time to go right back to the beginning and talk to them because, you know, even when you look at your ideal client or avatars or however you want to pronounce it, they have changed. I have changed. So if I'm anyone's ideal client, I've changed and they need to recognize that in the last 12 months or 18 months, two years. Yeah. Yeah. The success the businesses who did very well and a lot of businesses did very well in the last mm-hmm. two years, but the ones that did well uh, realized things had changed, which means the messaging had to change, which means that what you were launching had to be an answer to that. Yeah. And so we were having people who were, let's say uh, business consultants, instead of looking at sales and marketing, we're looking at debt recovery. We're looking at cash flow. We're looking at things that would continue to keep their actual clients in business and thriving throughout that time because basic systems were not in place. Yeah. And so those people did very, very well because it was the thing that was at the forefront of people's minds. Now, here's an interesting thing, I think, just for small business. <laughs> There's two different types of marketing. There is uh, pure marketing, which is the creating a, a want or a need in the market. I think it's really just the place of, of governments and large multinational organizations. As a small business, you don't need to. You don't need to educate the market. Really, small business marketing is research. Mm-hmm. Where is the market? Who are the market? Like what? They, they already have problems. They already have wants. Forget the needs. They've already got wants. They've got things that they want. 
let's engage them there and then help them with the things that they need once they say yes. Mm, very different way of looking at it. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure whether you've already mentioned this somewhere in uh, you know, some of your answers, but I really wanted to know what's the biggest lesson that you have launched that you have seen or had in your own business as far as launching goes? Yep. Um I well, there's sort of two lessons. One one is from experience just because of my um position, because I'm working with so many different businesses, I understand the time it takes mm-hmm. to launch. So you can launch uh, a newsletter in you know, less than a month with the entire process. Uh, but if you want to launch an event, you really want the six weeks. You know, there, there are all sorts of different. Um, so understanding how long a launch will take and then and then planning for it, right? So you give yourself enough time. Uh, and the, the one that I mentioned just before, which was that make sure you're continuing to speak to your market. You've launched something fantastic. There's never been a better time to actually find out what it is that's pressing on their buttons now. Yeah, that's a really good point. Really good point to almost finish off on, I think, too, because, uh, you know, that's where we need to start. But it's also kind of where you need to finish as well with a launch. Um, This has been such a great chat. And clearly, you know, a lot about launches. And I feel that anyone who's listened to this is now, you know, seriously jotting down lots of notes and trying to understand that bell curve type of thing that you have described today. Yeah. Um, Is there anything we haven't covered that you think is really important to this conversation? I think just can consider a launch. Um, uh, consider doing something purposeful. Understand that a uh, a marketing newsletter is not a, a campaign. A launch can um, a launch can be multi multifaceted. Like there, there's 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 more elements to a launch than the actual launch itself. So, let's say if we're launching a product. Um, the the actually telling people about the product is just one component of it. Do you do you have an event around it? Do you do you engage uh, other partners to share it with a discount code or whatever it might be? Do you how do you make it bigger? And um, that's that was actually a lesson that I learned years ago as well, which is um, all right. We've got our concept. What else? What like h- how else? Uh, and there was an example where I was going to run an event with a friend of mine and we're both, uh, speakers, professional speakers in the, uh, in the marketing space. And we were going to have the two of us come on and well, why are we doing this? All right. We're doing this to increase our list and to really engage with these people who, who have a, a want in this space. I go, okay, how else could we do this? And I was like, all right, well, our circle of influence is they both pretty overlap because we know a lot of the same people. We're definitely not fully, but all right. So that means we're going to get a lot of the same market coming to this event. All right. How else could we do it? And we ended up deciding that it would be best if we were not the headliners, we were not the actual speakers at the event. We just hosted it and facilitated the event and actually brought three bigger speakers from places that had no overlap in their, their circles of influence. Mm-hmm. And suddenly we had an event that had ticket sales over 300 where we would have normally had about 70. Yeah. And so. And you still grew your list. So you still got oh, the return you wanted. Yeah, it was, it was, it was massive. Mm-hmm. And, and they were opting in for, for our communication, which was, which was magic. And, um, yeah, we called that the influencers, and I did it with Kieran Zerner a, f- a few years back, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, wow. Awesome. Very good. Uh, thanks for sharing that and putting that all into a bit of context. I think that's really great for my audience. Um, if anyone's listening and they want to get in contact with you or want to follow along for more tips and tricks, where's the best place? Where do you hang out the most that they could get in t- contact with you? Yeah, uh, social media is the the best place to contact me, and um, you can just find it by looking at Russell Pearson. Uh, so that's double S double L, the way Russell should be spelled. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll be in the show notes or what have you. But, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, RussellPearson.com is where you can find the website, but also we've got this very cool, um, quite intimate uh, community on on Facebook called Future Proof which is very much uh, in alignment with our topic today because it's like, how are you adapting? How are you actually changing and, and continuing to evolve as the market evolves and, and enable you to not just have a business, but a lifestyle you love? Yeah, beautiful. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't yeah. want that? Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> 
thank you so much for coming on and talk to me, talking to us about launching. Um, it's been absolute gold and yeah, I'm sure my audience is going to be very appreciative of all your wisdom. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for having me on. No worries. How good was that? That was a great episode, wasn't it? That just made, you know, I've got a page of notes as well after talking to him. And of course, one of the privileges of doing a podcast um, is that I get to have pre and post chats as well. So I get to ask, you know, questions about my business and my launches and also, um, you know, pick his brain a little bit further, which, you know, again, is one of those little privileges. But I thought that was a great episode, a great interview and so many tips and tricks there. And I love the idea of the bell curve and the seven steps to launch launching. Um, so I'd love to talk more about launches with you. We can, of course, chat through DMs or you can come and join my Facebook group, Like Minded Business Owners, if you are not already over there. But that's it, guy, guys, peeps. That's it for episode um, 209. I will, of course, be back with episode 209. 10 next week um and if we're not being friends on social already or we're not being social on social then please come and um follow me along on instagram facebook or of course linkedin you'll find me under jen donovan and i will be sure to give you a hello and a holler back and i would love to follow your business journey but before i go one more little thing if you um think that there's a subject that you would like me to cover on this podcast or a guest you think I should um, interview, could you get in touch? You can either DM me on any of the platforms or, of course, you can email me at jen at jendonovan.com.au um, with your thoughts and suggestions. That would be super. I would absolutely love that. But whatever you do, remember my small business peep. As my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No time like the present Tell her like you feel it, say it proud Be true and let us see you For the star that you are No point in dreaming small I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Yorta Yorta people, on which I record this podcast and conduct my business today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend this respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today as well.